Good morning. Today we are going to uh, finish the last part of our last lesson, Torque and Simple Machines. First, let's read this together, History of Work. Before engines and motors were invented, people had to do things like lifting or pushing heavy loads by hand. Using an animal could help, but what they really needed were some clever ways to either make work easier or faster. Okay, so there were many problems they weren't able to solve, uh, like how to move things from place to place, how to get from low to high, how to uh, lift something that's really heavy off the ground, how to move something really very high distance. In order to solve all of these problems, they invented simple machines. Let's see what is simple machine now. So um, these are the simple machines. Oh, you will maybe get surprised, okay? Because the word machine may like bring to your mind complicated systems, uh, such as, for example, engines or airplanes, okay? So uh, these simple devices, such as like the hammer or the screw or the lever, may not seem like machines, but they are. So these, they are simple machines, okay? And the others that you know, like, um, uh, for example, bicycle, bulldozer, lawnmower, all of these, they are not simple machines. They are compound machines, okay? So they are combinations of these, okay? So a machine is any device that transmits or modifies force. So focus on this word. We will explain it. Modifies force, usually by changing the force applied by you. On the object all machines are combinations or modifications of these six fundamental types of machines called six simple machines so the six fundamental types of machines are these and they are called simple machines and all the other machines that you know around you they are combinations of these these six simple machines are lever this is the lever pulley this is a pulley okay inclined plane wheel and axle and wedge and screw okay here this is also about simple machine and compound machine uh, here a, a brief uh, definition for each one okay you can read it we, we are not going to uh, explain each one in details in, the, in this lesson we'll talk about simple machines in general but here i'm showing only you the difference between simple machines and compound machines see compound machines it's like wheelbarrow this one it's made of a combination of lever and wheel and axle lever and wheel and axle two simple machines okay Pencil sharpener, crane, bulldozer, clippers, escalators, all of these are compound machines. They are made by like two or three or more. It's like combination of simple machines. Okay. Um, now let's see this simple machine. It's the lever. It's a lever and it, it seems like um, seesaw, right? Okay, but here the pivot or the fulcrum, pay attention, it's not in the center. It's where it's closer to the object. This is the load and this fulcrum is closer to the object. Okay, why we use this type lever? It's from its name. We use it to make um, uh, or to lift things easier. If this load is very heavy and I can't lift it by hands, so I can put it on this side of the lever and I can here push on this side, exert a force. So first, pay attention, the force exerted by you on the machine is called the input force. Okay, so this is the input force. So you exert here an input force. And by its turn, the machine exerts what? An output force on the load. Okay? So you exert input force on the machine. The machine takes this input force. Okay? Uh, and actually here, the machine increases it. Look, here we exerted a small input force. Okay? 
and the machine exerts by its turn a large output force so this is the role of the machine it modifies the force you apply see I told you focus on this word it modifies the force okay so which force the force applied by you on the object our force it modifies the input force okay so here it takes this input force it increases it in order to give a larger output force which is enough to lift this object okay so let's say girls that this object is 90 kilogram okay 90 kilogram it means that and its weight is what its weight fg weight is mg right okay sorry so mg so it's uh, and g it's almost 10 so 90 times 10 900 newton so let's say 900 newton the weight of this load so if you bring this load and you uh, you raise it by hands okay you need to exert more or uh, uh, at least 900 newton and more in order to lift it up okay which is very hard okay for you to, to 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 hold this object and lift it up it's very heavy okay so in order to lift it using hands only using hands you what you must apply at least at least what 100 newton okay but using this lever i will apply a lesser force less than 900 maybe you will get shocked like maybe 10 newton or 100 newton are enough to lift this object why because this simple machine it magnifies this force it increases it okay it takes this force and increases it how how does it do this job actually girls here by changing the distances okay so the longer here the arm that you exert the force on it okay you will see that the greater the force exerted on the load just imagine if this arm was were longer longer okay and you exert a force it will be also easier to lift the load right okay we will explain why so now when a machine takes a small input force and increases it to produce a larger output force here we have something called mechanical advantage so mechanical advantage has been produced what is mechanical advantage so usually we just write ma mechanical advantage is listen the number of times that the machine increases the input of force let's say you exerted um uh, like 100 newton okay and the output force is 200 newton so the machine doubles your force okay your input force it doubles it right your input force is 100 and the machine produces 200 so the machine doubles your input force so here we say that the mechanical advantage is two okay it's the number of times the input force that the, that the machine increases the input force okay if your force was 100 and the the, the force that the machine produced uh, produces is 300 so in this case the machine triples your force so the mechanical advantage is equal to three so mechanical advantage in other words it measures the help of this machine so the greater the mechanical advantage it means here the more this machine can help okay the better is this machine okay so more ma more mechanical advantage means more help machines pay attention on this sentence cannot multiply work or energy cannot multiply work or energy but they can multiply force 
so what they change what they modify is the force okay mechanical advantage measures how machine how much a machine multiplies force okay now pay attention with me because the purpose of a simple machine is to change the force to modify it maybe modify its uh, um, amount maybe modify its direction only a useful way of characterizing simple machine is to compare output and input okay i will explain this see here um so the role of simple machine is to, to modify the force okay so usually um it increases the force so by increasing its magnitude but sometimes it doesn't increase the magnitude of the force you applied it sometimes it just changes the direction of the force you applied such as pulley the pulley is used to lift heavy objects okay so here you are pulling down in order to pull the object up right or no okay so here the force doesn't it change you have to exert at least a force equal to the weight of the box in order to lift it okay but what it changes here you are pulling down and the machine is causing the, the box to go how up so the machine it changes the direction of only of the force okay so a machine can change the magnitude of the force that you applied or the direction of the force that you applied okay so in a general way we say it modifies the force okay so uh, a useful way always when you talk about machine directly think about the input force the force you exert on this machine and the output force the force exerted by the machine on the object okay always we compare the output with input force so this ratio when we compare output with an input is what is the mechanical advantage so mechanical advantage is equal to the output force divided by the input force okay if the output force is 200 like here okay and the input force is 100 so 200 over 100 will give you 2 so that's why I told you the machine doubles your work for example it measures the times the, the how much a machine multiplies the input force okay so in an easier way we can just say it is the output force over the input force okay now if friction is disregarded, mechanical advantage can also be expressed in terms of input and output distance. I will explain this in the next slide. Okay. For sure to, more, to know more about simple machines, because in your lesson you are not required about, um, uh, it's not required to know uh, the details of simple machines, but if you want to know details about simple machines, you can check these two videos. Okay now so i will give you a very easy example about simple machine uh, you know this um, hammer that we use it to pry a nail from a board okay in this example this hammer the hammer is type of lever okay so it is a simple machine the hammer okay so here what are the forces directly think about the input force the force you apply and the, the output force the force applied by the machine okay here we are applying force on the hand handle uh, of the what or on the arm of the hammer so this is the force applied by you right and the machine or the hammer by its turn applies a force on the nail okay so this is what the output force here this is the output force okay so girls here um uh, the handle so in turns exert of an output force on the head of the nail which is stuck in the board and 
here if a friction is disregarded so the input torque that you exerted will be equal to the output torque okay you are exerting a force around specific pivot okay so that you are exerting a specific torque so this is the same as the torque what produced by the hammer on the nail okay the hammer will move around this pivot will move around this pivot okay so what is torque so torque we learned that it is force times distance times sine theta okay but if the force and the uh, um, axis of rotation or distance are perpendicular no need to mention sine theta because why because theta will be 90 and sine theta is 1 okay so torque in is equal to torque out torque in what is it as the force applied by u fn times distance n is equal to f out times distance out okay and already we said that mechanical advantage is output force divided by the input force using this equation if you put f out over f in what are you going to get f out you divide this here and this here by f in right type this and this will cancel each other you are going to get here f out times f n times d out okay times d out equals to what to d n if i want to find this alone so f out over f n you will find it f out over f n is equal to d n over d out right just math you divide both sides sides by d out so you get f out over f n is equal to d n over d out input distance over output distance so this is just another form for the mechanical advantage okay this is another form so also i can multiply the mechanical advantage by knowing the input distance and the output distance like what i will give you an easier example here let's say that you don't know anything about forces f input and out, f output but what you know you know d in d i d input and d output okay so in this case can we find the mechanical advantage yes i can because mechanical advantage it has an alternative form what is it it's d in over d out pay attention it's the opposite not d out over d n not output distance over input distance here no here it's the opposite it's input distance over output distance okay so how we got this equation as i explained from here the torque okay the torque here is conserved girls it's like the mechanical energy when no friction when the friction is disregarded like the friction here between the hammer and the board is disregarded so we say that the torque i exerted it i exert sorry the torque that i exert on the machine okay it is the one used by the machine to be exerted on the object okay so if the friction here this is disregarded the torque is conserved and from this equation i can get that f out over f n is equal to d n input distance over output distance okay now this example will make everything clear will explain why the simple machine such as here the inclined plane it modifies force not energy not work okay let's say that i have this box the same box in either cases okay but here you are using only your hands it's very heavy in order to put it here in the, in the car but here you are using an inclined plane okay so where in which uh, picture it's in or in which situation it's easier for you to push the box or put, to put it uh, in the um, uh, car so for sure in this one it's easier why because here you are exerting less force than here 
here if the okay, weight of the box is uh, 800 newton you must exert at least 800 newton up in this short distance to put it here but here if uh, uh, the same box we have you will exert much less than 800 newton you may exert only 100 okay so uh, always using an inclined plane or a simple machine will make the force that you exert less okay but we know girls that work is equal to force times distance okay force times distance how here the force is less okay the input force the force that you are exer exerting on the machine is less but the work is the same we said that the machine modifies only force not work so how can we have this okay so we can have this because also the distance is changing at the same time so here we can't change the force without changing the distance if you um, notice here the distance is shorter than this distance okay so here even though the force you exert is less but the distance the input distance okay is more so even though this one is less but the distance is more so that's why in both cases I have the same work so in order to lift this box using your hands or using a machine whatever the type of the machine you use you are going to do the same work okay but what's changing here is the force and the distance both so lifting this box straight up requires an input force at least equal to the weight of the box let's say that the box is 45 kilogram so the weight of the box is 450 newton so you must exert 450 newton in order to lift it and the distance here they said it's only one meter so the work done by you is 450 joule force times distance okay situation here number two using a ramp to lift the same box requires an input force which is less than the weight of the box now no need to exert 450 newton you can only exert what 150 for example but the input force must must be exerted over greater distance okay if you didn't use a ramp so here when you didn't use a ramp the distance was one but here by using the ramp the distance must be longer so here the distance is three okay but the force exerted by you is what is less so this is what we care about the force i need to to do my work easier so i need to exert less force so i exert less force and the distance increases the distance is more and the same work is done see here 400 and here 400 okay so uh, another example the same thing you have here look always when you have a small distance you have large force when you have large distance you have a small force the diagram shows two examples of trunk being loaded on a track in the first example a force of 360 newton moves the trunk through a distance of one meter so here what is the work 360 joules of work or you can say newton times meter in the second example a lesser force of only 120 newton sorry so here 120 newton the force here was 360 newton okay so the force decreases the work the work here is much easier because i'm exerting less force okay but the trunk must be pushed here a greater distance so also it requires the same amount of work okay conclusion same amount of work is done to lift the box with or without the simple machine the ramp what is the role of the simple machine or this ramp or this inclined plane its role is to decrease the force needed to lift the box is to decrease the input force 
okay to make it easier for you to increase the input force but increases the distance over which this force is applied machines all allows for a smaller force to be applied over longer this the last part is about mechanical efficiency pay attention mechanical efficiency is different from mechanical advantage it's not the same mechanical advantage we talked about it it's uh, uh, the, uh, measures the help of the machine it's equal to the output force divided by the input force okay now we are going to talk about mechanical efficiency it measures the efficiency of the machine how efficient the machine is um, uh, it means it uh, compares the output energy or the output work given by the machine with the input energy the input energy you gave to the machine okay um, uh, for ideal machines for ideal machines what means ideal machines first ideal machines are really perfect machines that are not present in life uh, they don't have uh, a friction at all okay so for these types of machines all the energy you give it's used as useful energy it's used as output energy okay so in this case the output work is equal to the input work and in this case the efficiency is equal to one because output work equals to input work what means one here one it means hundred percent if you multiply it by hundred if you convert it to percentage but in reality there is no machine that's hundred percent efficient okay no machine that's hundred percent efficient why because all real machines have some friction between the movable parts of the of the machine itself so always there is part of the given energy of the input work transferred to heat between the movable parts to sound so always there is a part uh, lost because of a friction okay so that's why always the output work in reality is less than the input work the output useful work or energy is less than the input useful and uh, the input given energy okay so the simple machines we have considered for far, so far are ideal frictionless frictionless machines in this case for ideal machines we can say they are 100 percent efficient but is it real it's not real machines however are not frictionless some of the input energy is always dissipated as sound or heat the efficiency of a machine is the ratio of useful output work to the input work okay so the efficiency of an ideal machine is what one or hundred percent and what about the real machines it's always less than one. The mechanical efficiency of a machine compares the amount of work energy output by the machine to the amount of work energy input into the machine. In the case shown here, energy is put into the system by the force that moves the block up the incline. As a result, the block gains gravitational potential energy. This is the output work of the machine. Mechanical efficiency can be calculated using the equation shown here where W out is the energy gained by the object and W in is the energy put into the system. In a frictionless system, the energy gained by the object would be equal to the energy put into the system. And the efficiency would be equal to 1. In real world machines, however, there is always energy lost to friction, so the efficiency is always less than 1.